What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm going to show you how I made these beautiful, smoky, tender, delicious, comfy, smoked oxtails with comfy smoked veggies. Coming up! The beauty of barbecue is that we use traditionally undesirable cuts of meat, whether it's brisket, beef cheeks, beef ribs. All these cuts are considered to be really tough, and that's because they're full of connective tissue, which is basically just a webbing of collagen that runs between the muscle fibers. And when cooked hot and fast, they shrink up and become really tough. But when cooked low and slow, whether it's a braise, roast, or on the barbecue pit, that connective tissue breaks down and the collagen turns into gelatin, which is why we end up with super tender beef ribs and super unctuous beef cheeks. So when you're looking for a good cut of meat for the barbecue pit, you should look for something full of collagen, and that's what we're going to do today. This is an oxtail. I picked this up at my local butcher shop, Salt and Time, and it is a Wagyu oxtail, so you know it's going to be delicious. All right, first thing we're going to do is open this up, see what we're working with. This is an oxtail, and as you can imagine, this is the tail of the cow. And they were nice enough to uh, score it right here for me, which is beautiful. So now what we're gonna do is go through and just separate it. You could cook this whole and then chop it up once it's fully cooked, or you can cook it in individual pieces, which is what I'm gonna do. That way we get a much better bark to meat ratio. As for this big guy, let's see if we can get through it. Ah, nope, I don't think we're gonna get through that. Made out of mostly bone and cartilage, pretty tough stuff. So I think it's time to bust out the bone saw. Careful not to hit the table. Beautiful. And for these bigger pieces, they've got a lot of fat on them still, so I'm gonna trim some of that up. Great for making tallow. Just going around, cleaning things up. And there we have, these are our oxtail chunks, come in different shapes and sizes, which is gonna make cooking them up and eating them a lot of fun. And as you can see, there's a tail running right through, but it's surrounded by all this awesome meat, and they're gonna come out super tasty. When it comes to a rub for your oxtails, you can do pretty much whatever you want, just like anything with barbecue. You can keep it classic salt and pepper. You can use an off-the-shelf rub. It's all up to you. But for me today, I'm gonna do a real classic with one cup, 16 mesh black pepper, half a cup of kosher salt, quarter cup of granulated garlic. Real simple, basic rub, very pepper heavy. That way we can go pretty heavy with this rub without worrying about over salting it. And the extra pepper is gonna really help develop that really nice bark that we're looking for. Looks good to me. Now we're simply gonna rub them down. Again, you can go pretty heavy because it's not too salty and that's kind of what we're going for here. In other videos, I did this in a big uh, metal tub. I dumped the meat into the rub and that was just more to prove a point that you can't really put too much rub on this stuff. But if you wanna keep your rub clean so it's reusable and not contaminated, this is the way to go about it. Just gonna get all sides. And no, I did not use all of this rub. That was more just to show the ratio. And I like having salt, pepper, garlic lying around. It's pretty much good on everything. Great for steaks, but that's looking just about right for me. So, on the pit they go. This blower comes in real handy to get the fire started a lot quicker because there's a lot of really dirty smoke and the early combustion of wood. So, if you got neighbors like I do, it's kind of a nice move to get this fire burning as quick as possible. On the pit they go. We're gonna go fat cap up if it's possible. All right, we're gonna maintain right around 275, 300 degrees for the next three, four hours. All right, it has been about two and a half hours thus far, and these little guys are starting to look real nice. I'd say these tiny ones are barky enough, so we're gonna pull these off while we let these uh, big boys keep going for a little bit longer. <laughs> Starting to look real nice. Boop. Oh man, these skies are about to open up. Man, I was really hoping to finish this video in the daylight. Oh well. Oh crap, my windows are open. It's getting so spooky out here. It's gonna be a gold washer. Brooke, do you think it's gonna rain? <laughs> Oh my God. Oh, it's raining men. Hallelujah, it's raining men. Oh, 
barbecue life. Some days you don't need a water pan. All good. Power just went out. This video's getting better and better. <laughs> and the power's back on. Look at that. So it's been about three hours and these oxtails are looking real nice and barky. Beautiful, bark is set, they're starting to smell real nice. We're at around 185 degrees internal. And they're still hard as rocks, which is why most people tend to braise them. So, what we're gonna do is let these cook for a little bit longer while we bust out the beef tallow. Typically you throw these in a braise, so they break down really slowly. You can throw some aromatics in the water or the broth, but... Today we're gonna throw them in some beef tallow, just like we did in the Chuck Burn Ends video. That way we don't lose any of the beefy flavor to the water and the beef fat will just add some really nice extra beefiness. I talked about how to render beef tallow in the Chuck Burn End video. But if you don't have any extra brisket fat lying around, you can also buy your own. I got this on Amazon. I'll have a link in the description for it. This is just a big old jug of beef tallow. Pick this up for uh, about 30 bucks. And it's just pure beef fat. Rain or shine, folks. I'm just gonna put enough in here to get a nice coating over all of the oxtails. So I'm just gonna pop these right in. Basically, we're gonna cone feed these, which means cook them low and slow in some beef fat until they become impossibly tender. Man, I'm burning twice as many logs as I was about an hour ago. It's because we're losing all the radiant heat from all the heat stored in the metal itself. I'm also gonna add some vegetable to this beef cone fee. Just a rough chop on some carrots and some celery here. I figure we might as well add a little extra flavor to the oxtails. And also some tallow cone feed vegetables. Sounds pretty tasty. A little onion. In they go. This is gonna leave us with some really good tasting beef fat too by the end. We're also gonna throw in a few sprigs of thyme. Back on the pit they go, till everything's nice and tender. So it's been about three hours, the storm has passed, and we did what we call a hot cone feed, which means basically I kept this pit at about 300 degrees for the last few hours, and these oxtails are starting to feel real tender. Ooh, that's hot. The probe just goes right through it, no problem. Reading a solid 200 degrees internal temp. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull these out. We're gonna let them rest for a little bit. I'm probably gonna put them on the smoker so all the excess grease falls through and then we're gonna plate them up. Now we're gonna strain out all of this beef fat through this perforated pan. So all we're left with is these beautiful confit vegetables. Oh God, they smell so good. Beautiful oxtails. I'm gonna keep them on the smoker here for just a little bit, just to crisp up a little bit. Get some nice extra smoky bark on there. Chives. So after about six hours of smoking confit, I believe these oxtails are ready to be plated up. I made some white rice. Oh man, these smell so good. Let's see how they look. Got a really nice bark on there. Feeling nice and tinda. Peeling back from the bone, that's a good sign. Oh yeah, that's money. It's like cowtail barbacoa. Looks so good, let's give it a shot. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. The veggie cone fee really adds some really nice flavors to it. Highly recommend it. You guys want to come eat some uh, oxtails on camera? Ooh, on camera? I think the, yeah, the, the table's high enough to hide my boner. Ew. Oh, Tim, are gonna give me the best chive drizzle of all time? There's no second drizzle. There's only the first drizzle. All right. What do you think, Tim? Mm. Mm-hmm. Two thumbs up. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of collagen in the bone, mm -hmm. you know? That's what makes it good. Hey, it's good for your joints. Oxtail vitamins coming to a, a, a wholesaler near you. <laughs> it's delicious. Mm. 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 It's so fatty and delicious. Uh, it's very satisfying. I'm gonna fucking suck this bone dry. You guys don't even watch me. Get all the meat off first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
right, guys, and that is it. That is my version of smoked oxtails with confit vegetables. I highly recommend giving this recipe a try. If you've never had oxtails before, they come out super tender and really tasty. You definitely gotta check this one out. And if you have a cousin in town with his girlfriend, they're definitely gonna love it too. But if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications every time I put out a new video, which is every Tuesday at 8 a.m. If you have any questions for me, hit me up on Instagram at ChudsBBQ, slide into the DMs, I'll make sure to get back to you. Head over to ChudsBBQ.com for all pit inquiries and to see what smokers I am selling. Head over to the Leroy and Lewis Patreon to see more content from me and the whole gang at Leroy and Lewis. Also, if you wanna learn from me personally and the rest of the guys from Leroy and Lewis, we are having a class this August. So make sure to sign up at LeroyandLewisBBQ.com. Come hang out with me on this very set and learn about smoker building, brisket trimming, all of that. But please like and subscribe, it helps me out a lot. I have links in the description down below for everything I used in this video and every other video. Let me know in the comments below what you wanna see me cook next. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.